Hey everybody and welcome to the next edition of the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog. I just got back from Argentina where I was staying for one week and visiting with a friend, colleague and mentor of mine, a coach named Rafael Carbajal who's one of the top coaches in Canada. However, for the past few years he's been in South America. Last year he was in Uruguay where um, he was the head coach of a club in the second division called Canadian SC and uh, I was fortunate that he gave me the opportunity to work as a fitness coach uh, for him with that club last year and this year he's in Argentina because he has to take his Argentinian A license in order to validate some of the other coach licenses that he's obtained uh, earlier in his career so he's there doing the A license and I went to visit him and it was a fantastic trip for me uh, I got to sit in on some of the lectures and on-field sessions from the A-License and also through some contacts that he had made, we got to watch uh, one of the top youth clubs in Argentina. The club is called Huracan and they are known as being the best developers of young players in the whole country. And so since Argentina is one of the best countries in the world at developing players, we could say that Huracan would be one of the best clubs in the world at developing players and we were lucky that we got to sit in and watch some of the academy training sessions from the under 13 age category all the way up to the senior academy team. So today on the blog I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I learned while watching these young professional academy players train, watching the coaches, and also just being immersed in, in the culture of, of uh, one of the best soccer countries in the world. So one of the first things that uh, stood out to me right away when I watched the under 13 boys train at Huracan was just how skillful they were technically and also that the the speed of play, the ability to read the game and, and, and just the, the, the tactical awareness and, and knowledge of their positioning that they had was just so much better than anything I'm used to seeing in Canada, including at the higher levels and higher age groups in Canada. And uh, when I got to talk to some of the academy coaches, they one of the things that they mentioned to me, which was a little bit surprising, was that even at the under 13 age group, the boys were training five days a week. They're training Monday to Friday, and they had a game either on Saturday and Sunday. And that means that the commitment level in the professional academies in Argentina is a six day per week commitment from the age of 12. This commitment flies in the face a little bit of what we've been seeing lately in Canada which is the the long-term athlete development model and one of the main uh, tenets of the long-term athlete development model is that it calls for late specialization and so late specialization would mean that, that young athletes, soccer players or any other athlete, would not specialize in their own sport until around the age of, of 16 or 17 or until around the 10th grade. Until that age, players are recommended to participate in numerous sports. So even if soccer is your first sport, you might play soccer three or four days a week, but that would still leave you some time to play other sports. In Argentina, this simply isn't the case. Everyone I talk to, including some of the top fitness coaches, the, you know, the professional academy coaches and, and the instructors from the A license and Raphael, they all pretty much uh, repeated the same thing to me, which is that over there, if you're a talented soccer player, all you do is play soccer. And there are some, in theory anyway, some pros and cons to both models, the early specialization model, which we see in Argentina, and the late specialization model which is uh, being promoted in, in Canada and many other countries in the world and so for example <clears throat> proponents of early specialization would point to the fact that in soccer because the technical requirements are so high you have to be so proficient at all the different technical skills and also because the tactics are very complicated if you don't specialize early and you don't train or, or repeat the techniques enough or, 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 or practice enough or play enough games where you're getting uh, improvements in, in your tactical ability, then you're just never going to reach the higher level. The counter argument or the proponents of the late specialization model would say that too much soccer at an early age would make you predisposed to injuries. It would also limit your overall athletic development because there's a chance that you may not use 
certain muscles enough, for example, the muscles in the back or the side of the hip, uh, the upper body muscles, those kind of things that you would get more of if you trained a variety of sports. So potentially you might be more at risk of injury and you also might be more, um, or uh, actually you'd be a little bit less well-rounded as an athlete. So there's probably some truth and some, some credence to both of those arguments. But I think where Argentina gets it right with their early specialization is that they're not just taking kids and making them play a lot of soccer without thinking about things like the overall load to the players, uh, what they're doing in training, what types of exercises, how they, how they warm up, how they cool down, all those kinds of things. And the reason that in Argentina, you know, they are uh, probably doing a much better job of, of planning and periodizing everything is because the standard of coach education in Argentina is so much higher than it is in other countries, especially a country where I'm from, Canada. So as an example, everybody that works in that country at any level in the professional academy system, so that's the elite youth players, every coach that works there has to take at a minimum their lowest level license, which is the C license, and that represents a two-year, 1,400-hour course that includes, in addition to the technical and tactical soccer training, it includes courses in physiology, periodization of training, sports psychology, and motor learning, which means that the coaches have to prove their knowledge and their competence in the sports science side of soccer as well as in the technical and tactical side. Why is this so important? Well, if you're going to be working with an elite level boys team in Argentina, even at the under 13 age group, we've seen that you're going to be responsible for planning training five and six days a week plus the game, which means that these boys are going to be getting basically all of their exercise throughout the week from the work that you do. So if you don't understand sports science and you're not really well trained and well educated in periodization, there's a very good chance that you're going to lead the athletes to some of the things that the people who criticize early specialization are, uh, are, are, are talking about, which is predisposition to injury, too much load, burning out the players, and all the other things that people will complain about when they complain about early specialization. But if you are a knowledgeable coach and you've been through the courses and you've proven your competence, then you're much more likely to get things right with periodization, in which case the early specialization might not be such a problem. So pretty much everybody that I talked to in Argentina pointed to one thing which is pretty much considered to be conclusive evidence that the way they train, their theory and methodology, and the fact that they have early specialization is not a problem and is in fact the best way to develop players. And that is the performance of the players themselves in training and in games. And in Argentina, you really cannot argue with that point because from the youth all the way up to the senior levels, Argentina has been one of the most successful countries in the world in international competitions. If you look at the number of World Cups they've won, Copa Americas, which are the South American championships, how successful they've been in youth World Cups, including dating back to uh, some Canadians would remember when Canada hosted the Under-20 World Cup in 2007. Argentina won it with some top players such as Sergio Aguero. And in addition to all the success that their national teams have had, you can also look at how many of their top players that come out of their youth academies are playing professional soccer, not just in Argentina, but all over the world. And of course, everyone knows about Lionel Messi, who you know many people believe to be the best soccer player in the world right now. But the fact is that Argentina has hundreds of professional players playing in top clubs all over the world. So they've been very good at developing talent and exporting that talent to the rest of the world in professional soccer. And they've also been very successful at all the different international levels. So clearly, what they're doing with their youth development, including the early specialization, is working. So to wrap things up, in Canada, 
what would be the most effective model for player development? Would it be the early specialization model like we see in Argentina, where players as young as 12 are playing nothing but soccer? Or would it be the late specialization model that's recommended in long-term athlete development and is also um, very popular in many countries throughout the world? Well, I think the answer to that question is that it's complicated and it would depend on a number of other factors that uh, that we see in the country. As is the case in Argentina, there are certain things about that country that make early specialization possible and very effective. And one of those that I've tried to highlight today is, is that the high standard of coach education in Argentina. So would an early specialization model be effective in Canada if we didn't raise the standards of our coach education? I think the answer to that is probably no, uh, but again, uh, at least I can say that, that we don't know because it's complicated. Ultimately, as I've said in my blog, if you want to use the evidence in support of early specialization by looking at the end product, which is the performance of the youth and senior national teams, as well as how well clubs are developing players and exporting those players throughout the world, then clearly in Argentina at least, the early specialization model is effective. Will it work in Canada? We don't know. I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. So that's it for the Soccer Fitness Goals video blog for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you haven't done so already, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to download the Soccer Fitness Goals mobile fitness app, which is the world's only soccer-specific, customized, at-home training program for soccer players of any age or level of ability, we'll put the link up underneath me right here. We'll see you next week, and until then, keep reaching your soccer fitness goals.